Hello and welcome back. I'm standing here in front of a beautiful new 2021 Polestar 2, about to do a DC fast charge test. We're at 150 kilowatt Electrify America DC fast charger, and I just completed a 70 mile an hour highway range test with this vehicle, and I drove it down past zero. So this battery is dead. We're gonna record the whole DC fast charge session, take a look at the charging curve, where it peaks at, analyze the heck out of it. That whole recording is coming up next, so stay tuned. Uh, first things first, though, I wanna talk about the battery here. The Pulsar 2 has a 78 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, of that, 75 kilowatt hour is usable. I suspect I used all of it because I drove about seven miles after this thing hit zero and I was in turtle mode, reduced power, all that. The vehicle was barely moving when I rolled into here. I mean, I, I don't think I could have went another quarter of a mile. Honestly, this is about as close as I've cut it with any of the range tests we've done so far. So we're gonna plug in now, record the whole session, analyze it, stay tuned. So now let's take a look at the recording of the Polestar 2 charging from 0% up to 90%. Before I start, I want to explain something. The Polestar 2 is capable of accepting up to 150 kilowatts. And Polestar recently did a software update that was supposed to make the car charge even faster than it previously did. However, my car didn't have that latest update. In fact, I think, and I haven't been able to confirm this, that it the charge rate was throttled down because the most I saw was 100 kilowatts. Now, I think that's because the Polestar 2 and also the Volvo XC40, which shares the same battery pack and a lot of the same components with the Polestar 2, have had difficulties charging at a number of different charging stations here in the US, DC fast charge stations. So I think as a temporary solution, Polestar has throttled down the charge rate to only 100 kilowatts. Um, and these are press loaner cars, these aren't customer cars. So I, I guess they figure, well, that's fast enough for the press, except for the people doing DC fast charge tests. But luckily there's not a lot of us out there doing that. Um, so the most we saw was 100 kilowatts. I think that's a temporary solution. I'm gonna try to get a Polestar 2 in a couple of months, once this has been resolved, I actually spoke with, with um, Polestar and Electrify America about this, and uh, they, um, uh, I know they're working on a solution together and something should be fixed relatively soon, within a week or so, I think uh, all the communication issues, at least with Electrify America network, um, won't, will, will have been resolved. Um, they'll probably be resolved by the time this video actually goes live, from what I understand. Uh, and another thing I wanna point out is that Bjorn Nyland, who does uh, some really good DC fast charging tests also, recently posted a video where he compared his charging of the, his recording of a charging session on a Polestar before the software update and after the software update. And before the software update, um, he was only able to achieve 133 kilowatts maximum charge rate after he got about 150. So you would assume the car would charge faster. That wasn't the case. It actually took four more minutes to charge from 10% to 90%. He did the test 10% to 90%. I'm doing it zero to 90%. Um, and that's because the charge, the maximum charge rate doesn't tell the whole story. I've mentioned that many times here on State of Charge. You really have to look at the whole charging curve. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the charging, the maximum charging rate is a sexy number that people are, oh, it can take in 150 kilowatts, 200 kilowatts. But if it only takes it in for like a minute or two, like say the Mustang Mach-E that only holds the maximum charge rate for two minutes, then you know the rest of the charging curve is much more important. And in the case of the Polestar, um, while it only took in 100 kilowatts maximum, the charging curve was pretty good. So we actually charged pretty quickly. Um, and, and Bjorn, when he did his tests, he went from 10% from to 90% in 54 minutes with the old software, 10% to 90% in 58 minutes with the new software. So that was kind of what I was looking to try and match. Um, and we'll have to watch the video, but I think you're gonna be surprised at the results. Again, remember, I drew a maximum of 100 kilowatts and uh, Bjorn took in 150 kilowatts for a, a short period of time. So now let's jump to the recording and um, see how it goes. And then we'll do a little summary at the end and I'm gonna circle back 
to talking about Bjorn's results compared to mine. By the time we hit 1% state of charge, we were already pulling 92 kilowatts. That's what I like to see. We hit 10% state of charge in five minutes. Remember that because I'm gonna circle back to that later. The Polestar continued to charge at 97 kilowatts and we reached 20% state of charge in a relatively quick 11 minutes. It took 16 minutes to reach 30% state of charge and the charge rate ticked slightly up to 98 kilowatts. Still charging at 98 kilowatts when we reached 40% state of charge in 21 minutes. Now I'm going to stop the video at the 43% state of charge point, which took 23 minutes to achieve. That's because we've now added 100 miles of range back to the vehicle. When I do these DC fast charge tests, I like to point out how long it takes to add 100 miles of range and then 200 miles of range back into the battery. That's important for road trips. You might not need to charge 100%, but you might need to just add 100 miles or even possibly 200 miles. So it's good to know how long that takes. Uh, I just finished a 70 mile an hour highway range test with the Polestar 2. The link to that video is in the description section of this video if you want to watch it. Uh, in which I drove the Polestar 2 226 miles at a constant 70 miles an hour. I then drove it an additional 7 miles at lower speeds off the highway to get to the charging station. So I finished up driving it 233 miles on a single charge. That's actually the EPA range rating, 233 miles. I usually use my personal range test results to determine how long it takes to replenish 100 miles. Uh, but in this case, it just happened to be the same as the EPA range rating. Since I traveled 233 miles, uh, once we've added back 43% of the battery, as we just did, we have added back 100 miles of range. Okay, back to the rest of the recording. We then reach 50% state of charge in 27 minutes, and we're still holding that 98 kilowatt power draw. But that's when the pulse starts, starts throttling down its charge rate. And by the time we reach 60% state of charge in 33 minutes, we're now taking in 67 kilowatts. Still not bad, but it's starting to throttle down. Uh, we reach 70% state of charge in 40 minutes. And the charge rate actually crept up a little to 69 kilowatts at that point. The 80% state of charge point came in 47 minutes. And the charge rate was now down to 49 kilowatts. That's still not terrible for an 80% state of charge uh, point, but at 80%, that's when the Polestar really starts to throttle down, as most EVs do. Uh, and by the time we reach 90%, uh, it's 63 minutes, and the charge rate is only 14 kilowatts. Since it took 63 minutes, uh, exactly to go from zero to 90%. I have to mention that 63 minutes coincidentally is the exact amount of time it took me to charge my Model 3 from zero to 100% charged. And the Model 3 added 310 miles of range while the Polestar 2 added 210 miles of range if you count zero to 90%. So it just goes to show you a little bit of the advantage that Tesla has with uh, high speed DC fast charging. Uh, you know, it, it added 100 miles more of range in the same 63 minutes of charging. Okay, so I wanna circle back to the beginning of the video when I talked a little bit about what Bjorn Nyland found when he compared the uh, Polestar 2 DC fast charging session from the uh, old software to the new software. If you remember, with the new software that was supposed to improve the charging speed, it took Bjorn 58 minutes to charge from 10% to 90%. And we just completed a 0% to 90% charging session in 63 minutes. But if you remember in the beginning of the charging session, I noted to remember that it took five minutes to achieve a 10% state of charge. It took five minutes to go from zero to 10%. So if we take that five minutes off of the total time it took us to charge to 90%, that would be the 10% to 90% charge, we get 58 minutes. 
the exact same time it took Bjorn to charge. And he was on the latest software on a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger. And he even achieved a, the, a close to 150 kilowatts for a while. So it goes to show you that the maximum charging rate is not nearly as important as the charging curve overall. Now, I don't know why it took him the same time it took me when the most I pulled in, I think was 99 kilowatts, uh, and he pulled in for a good deal of the charging session, it he pulled in well more than 100 kilowatts. So you would think that he had to finish up uh, quicker than I, but he didn't. Uh, overall, our charging curve was better, even though we didn't charge at such a high rate. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna try to get a hold of a new Polestar once uh, Polestar has uh, the, the software all updated here in the US and duplicate this on a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger and we'll compare the results. But for now, I'm comparing it to what Bjorn did. And uh, this car charged just as quickly from 10% to 90%, and it didn't have nearly the same maximum charging rate. So I also made a couple of graphs to look at. Let's take a look at the first one now. And that's the one where I shown the entire charging curve from zero to 90%. As you can see here in the beginning, look at that beautiful straight line where the car just accepted right under 100 kilowatts from 0% all the way up to about 51%. That's fantastic. That's really why we achieved such good results here today. Um, it just held that 100, 100 kilowatt for 50% of the charge. But if you notice right after 50%, I think it was right around 51%, it took a steep drop down, all the way down to 78 kilowatts. It was charging at 98 kilowatts at 50%, and then I think it went to 78 kilowatts. So it took a big steep down. But then it bounced back up a little bit uh, from 78 kilowatts up to 84 kilowatts um, by the time we were charging at uh, 55%, uh, while the, by the time the car was at 55% state of charge. Uh, and then took another nice step down uh, at around the 57% state of charge mark. Um, and uh, it dropped all the way down to 68 kilowatts. And it held that though for a while, which is good. This is good to see here that it held the, that uh, 68 kilowatts all the way up to 75% state of charge. And at that point, it starts to begin um, to look like a staircase, the charging curve, where you know it drops off precipitously and then it holds that for a couple of minutes and it drops off and it holds it for a minute or two, drops off again. That's not uncommon once we get up uh, over the 75, close to 80% state of charge rate for electric vehicles, where they drop off um, quite a bit. Um, and it, it repeats that all the way up to the 90% state of charge where we ended this test. And by that point, it was only taking in 14 kilowatts. Now, I also prepared uh, another chart, um, and this one here demonstrates the time. It shows you how long it takes to charge uh, based on this charging session. Um, and, you know, uh, this, with this, you can see how many minutes it takes to achieve a certain state of charge. If you know you want to add uh, the 25% or 50% state of charge, you can kind of use this as a guide. Um, and it could be handy for road trips, although you have to remember that battery temperature and the state of charge that you plug in at will affect the charging curve. Still, I think this can be a useful tool for, for Polestar 2 owners. Uh, they could take a look at it and kind of get an idea of, of how long it takes to achieve a, a certain level of state of charge. So that's it for our Polestar 2 DC fast charge test. Uh, as I mentioned a couple times already, I think we're going to be repeating this one at some point soon, uh, hopefully with an up-to-date uh, Polestar, and we will compare it to our findings here and also possibly to uh, what Bjorn has done. But for now, that's it. Uh, don't forget, if you like what we're doing here on State of Charge, please like the videos and also subscribe to the channel, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge.